In Japan, tea brewing is simple. Put tea, put water, and wait. That's it. Tea is ready. What makes it complicated is the tea ceremony itself. In this simple routine, I made at least five mistakes. There is no ceremony in Turkish tea culture. But the simple tea brewing task dangerously turned into a rocket science. It is so complicated, an article from the Turkish Journal of Trauma and Emergency Surgery indicates that 64% of the household accidents happen while preparing and pouring tea. Today, I will put the Turkish tea under the microscope and show you the most logical way to brew it. First, let's look at our subject a bit closer. Like all tea, Turkish tea originated from Camellia sinensis. It is a mild Earl Grey, smelling more floral and perfume rather than citrus. The yellowish-orange residue on the leaves is the actual caffeine. During the tea's drying process, caffeine is caramelized and turns into these orange particles which actually is crystals. Now let's make some tea. It doesn't matter what kind of Turkish tea maker you are using. There are always three components. Strainer, brewer and kettle. First, boil some water in the kettle and let it cool down. This process makes the lime in the water sink. Then take the strainer. Put one tablespoon of tea for each person. Tea strainer goes into the brewer, then the cold water we already prepared. Now fill the kettle again. Put everything together and boil the water again. After boiling complete, turn this switch on. It will keep the kettle warm. Now wait for 15 minutes for the tea to steep. This batch of tea will be fresh for at least 2 hours. It also makes 5 to 6 cups of tea for one person. Of course, we're not done yet. To pour the perfect cup of Turkish tea, you need to know a bit of molecular chemistry and a bit of color science. The color of the Turkish tea comes from a substance called tannin. Tannin is a biomolecule that binds and precipitates proteins and various organic compounds. In other words, it holds all the beneficial particles from the tea together. Since tannin works at a molecular level, it only can be seen with an electron microscope, which I don't have yet. However, you can observe tannin while tea leaves releasing color into the water during the steeping time. Because of tannin, the tea has a brownish red color. The tone of the color determines the strength of the caffeine in the tea. In Turkish tea culture, each tone of the tea color is categorized and named. The first one is called light tea. Fill one third of the cup with the tea and dilute it with the hot water. Hence, there is less caffeine in the tea. This is what doctors recommend you to drink. The second one is called steep tea, which has a darker color. The amount of the tea and the hot water is almost half and half. This is the most popular tone among the tea drinkers. The third one is called the bunny blood. It contains most of steep tea and a little bit of hot water. At this point, tea tastes bitter and you might consider adding some sugar to make it more palatable. If you drink this, I can guarantee you're not going to sleep that night. And then the Pasha tea, which is a light tea with lukewarm water and lots of sugar. It is mainly made for kids. I still drink my tea that way sometimes. It is my guilty pleasure, what can I say? So, are you interested in making Turkish tea? Then check the link on the description box for the tea maker I use for this video. I don't get any benefits from this brand, all I'm asking from you in return to like my video and your subscription. Also, check out my other works. I make microscopy videos of any kind and tell strange stories.